so let's talk about new criticism and intentional fallacy and effective fallacy first i am going to talk about the intentional fallacy the intentional fallacy is a concept in new criticism theory that suggests that the intended meaning or purpose of an author is not always the most reliable way to interpret a literary work so what is said that you cannot rely upon a author's an author's intention author's emotion author's feeling so you cannot rely upon that if you want to interpret a text you cannot rely upon author's intention what the author intention what the author trying to say or author's emotion new critics believe that the meaning of a text should be derived from the text itself rather than from the author's intention or the reader's personal experiences so what they say the new critics believe that the meaning of a text should be derived from the text itself they they believe that a text is a auto telling text right it itself telling you what it's mean so a meaning of a text should be derived from the text itself rather than author's intention or reader's personal experiences they argued that focusing solely on the author's intention could lead to misinterpretation or limitations in understanding the deeper layer of a literary work it means that if you try to so focus solely on author's intention it would be a mis misinterpretation or it limits your understanding of a deeper layer of a uh, literary work as i told you before that if i gave you if i give you a poem written by wordsworth as an example and i told you that it is a poem written by wordsworth so you know that wordsworth was a nature lover so you try to interpret this text into that way that wordsworth is a nature lover and so he must Uh, writing in that way in his intention you are focusing on wordsworth intention but there they said you could not try to find the author's intention author's emotion author's feeling but rather than you have to only focus on the text by close reading and because it is a autotelic text one of the critical concepts of new criticism intentional fallacy was formulated by winsett and beardsley in an essay in the verbal icon in 1946 so it is an essay in verbal icon 1946 as a mistake of attempting attempting to understand the author's intention when interpreting a literary work claiming that it is fallacious to base a critical judgment about the meaning or value of a literary work on external evidences concerning the author's intention so it is saying the same thing winsett and beardsley held that the design or intention of the author is neither available nor desirable as a standard for judging a success of a work of literary art so what they said they said that it is not available if you try to interpret the text uh, with wordsworth intention it is not available to you because you don't know that in that uh, when he was writing this poem what was his feeling so you it is not available to you and it is not desirable to you also to standard a artwork by author's feeling author's intention this is closely associated with the new critical critical notion of the autotelic text what is autotelic text autotelic text mean a text is a autotelic mean it telling you what it means so the text itself telling you what it means you don't have to go by the author's biography and the background and the historical background so they believe that a text is a autotelic text and they also believe the text is a autonomous work let's see according to which the meaning of a work is contained solely with the work itself and any attempt to understand the author's intention violates the autonomy of the work so they believe new criticism 
always believe that a text is an autonomous work. Mean you have to reject the author's intention, you have to reject the historical background or any background because you have to take it as an autonomous work. After that, structuralism also following this but they focus in language and after that when new historicism came they reject this notion that no you have to also focus the background and the author's contemporary situation and the author's biography but now new criticism always believe that a text is an autotelic text note the key point and they also believe that a text is an autonomous work T.S. Eliot in Traditional and Individual Talent, which was published in 1919, had argued that the honest criticism and sensitive appreciation are directed not upon the poet but upon the poetry. So what he said that an honest, a honest criticism and sensitive appreciation are directed not upon the poet but the poetry, upon the poetry, stylistically as well as Conceptually, intentional fallacy was against the romantic notion of literature as a vehicle of personal expression. So you know that in a lyrical ballad, Wordsworth said that a poet, poem is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feeling. Means a ordinary man's spontaneous overflow of feeling was a poem. But in traditional and individual talent, you know that T.S. Eliot completely rejected it and he said that it is not a spontaneous overflow of powerful feeling. So you have to write it in, you have to practice it how to write and you have to write it in scientific way. You cannot write what came in your mind, right? So he just rejected it that it is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feeling. With the entry of structuralism and post-structuralism into the literary arena, literature began to be seen as a purely linguistic artifact. So after that, when structuralism and post-structuralism post came after the new criticism, they focus on linguistic artifact. And intentional fallacy was strongly underscored with Barthesian concept, the date of the author. So you know that John, uh, Roland Barth. He wrote the death of the author and he just completely rejected author's position and he said that it uh, author is uh, died, right? Let's know about the affective fallacy. The affective fallacy is, an anath is another concept put forth by W.K. Wilson and Monroe C. Beardsley in their essay, Effective Fallacy. So, in Intentional Fallacy essay, they talk about Intentional Fallacy and in Effective Fallacy essay, they talked about Effective Fallacy. So, Effective Fallacy, which was also published in 1949. So, it was republished in 1949 and you have to know that Effective Fallacy came first and after that Intentional Fallacy came. So, Intentional Fallacy came in 1954. And affective fallacy came in 1949 and both came in verbal icon uh, after that. So this concept is closely related to the intentional fallacy and pertains to the interpretation of literature based on the emotional response or feeling it evokes in the reader. So in intentional fallacy they totally reject that you cannot go with author's intention and in this uh, affective fallacy they said that if you are going to interpret a text in by looking at author's intention you are doing intentional fallacy and now they are saying that if you are going to the reader's interpretation or the reader's emotional response you are doing the affective fallacy mean a text how it affects you how it's affect uh, you as an individual is uh, is not affects me in the same way right you are an um, different individual i am a different individual if i looking at text which is if i am facing in my life um suppression of uh, suppression of other gender and if i am suppressed by one uh, male of my family and if i am looking at the text and i saw that it is a, a text where where a female was suppressed by an by a male so it is like for me it is a feminist way but if a girl who is totally happy in his in her life he is not 
uh, seeing this text in same way so you cannot judge the text by looking only my response my feedback if you are looking only my feedback my feedback cannot the uh, the surety my uh, feedback da cannot give you the surety that it is the final interpretation of the text so Wimsett and Beardsley argued that relying solely on a reader's emotional reaction to a text would lead to a misinterpretation of its meaning. They believed that inherent value of a literary work should not be solely determined by emotions it stirs in readers. So how it, um, it stirs you or how it affects uh, you as an individual, as a reader, as a reader does not the final interpretation of the text you can take the text in another way i can take the uh, text in another way right instead they advocated for focusing on the objective analysis of the text itself detached from personal emotional responses in order to arrive at a more accurate understanding of its meaning and significance so what they said that it detached the personal emotional responses it cannot the one individual's personal emotional response you cannot go with it in order to arrive the final meaning or the accurate meaning of the text so this is intentional fallacy and this is affective fallacy i hope you understand intentional fallacy you cannot go with the uh, in author's intention and effective fallacy you cannot go with the reader's in uh, reader's response or reader's emotion how it uh, how it affects the reader then uh, let's know about the theorist who gave this term monroe Curtis beardsley who born in 1915 and died in 1985 was an american philosopher of art his work in aesthetic is best known for its championing of the instruments uh, instrumentalist theory of art and the concept of aesthetic experience. Beardsley was elected president of the American Society for Aesthetics in 1954. Among literary critics, Beardsley is known for his two essays written with uh, Wimsatt, what they are, the intentional fallacy and the effective fallacy. Both key texts, new, uh, both key texts of new criticism, his book include, so his uh, another books are Practical Logic, which published in 1950, then Aesthetics, which published in 1958, and Aesthetic, A Short History, which published in 1966. So I repeat, Practical Logic, Aesthetic, and Aesthetic, A Short History. You can remember it also. So let's talk about Wimsatt. Wimsatt, who was uh, born in 1907 and died in 1975 was an american professor of english literary theorist and critic Wimsett is often associated with the concept of the intentional fallacy which developed with monroe beardsley in order to discuss the importance of an author's intention for the creation of work of art so let's see his other's work other important works are Hateful Contrary Studies in Literature and Criticism. Hateful Contrary Studies in Literature and Criticism. And Literary Criticism, A Short History with Brooks, uh, Clint Brooks. So it was written with Clint Brooks and it published in 1957. So that's all. I try to un make you understand as uh, possible as I can. So if you like this video please uh, show your support by subscribing my channel and please like comment and uh, share and please try to give your true feedback so that i can uh, it improve my uh, teaching okay so thank you for giving your time uh, i hope i can continue this series thank you very much